You ready? What do I want to do? We want to um, evaluate this guy using a Riemann sum. So if we want to use a Riemann sum to evaluate an integral, we need this theorem. If f is an integral of a function on the closed interval a, b, and we are trying to find the integral from a to b of the function, we're going to use the limit as n goes forever of this sum, the Riemann sum, where um, i starts at 1 and goes to n. But wait, there's more. This is that function evaluated at some point in the little subinterval, where that's the width of the subinterval. So what are you doing? You're taking the height times the width, and you're getting the area, and then you're adding them up, and then you're making the interval so small that you're able to get a very, very good approximation for this interval. And the width of the interval is b minus a over n. Why? Because if you have 11 subintervals, mm -hmm, or n subintervals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot, 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 n subintervals, the width of this interval is going to be mm -hmm, big one minus small one divided by the number of intervals gives you that little width right there. And then the x value that you're evaluating it at is going to be the first one. Uh-huh. What's my next one? Oh, plus an interval. That's x1. Plus one more interval. That's x2. And so on and so forth. OK. So now that we have that definition, we need a game plan. So fortunately, we have a game plan. First, we're going to calculate delta x. That's b minus a over n. Then. We're going to find um, xi, which is your general x, <laughs> a plus i delta x. And then we're going to evaluate f of xi. After we find that, we're going to stick it into our original function. And why are we doing it into pieces? It's going to chunk it. And when we chunk it, we make it easier on us, making it, making it easy, easy on you. And then we're going to be using our limit laws to simplify. We want to run the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation i equals 1 to n of what we found here times what we found here. Yes. And then after that, we're going to use some sums, those laws, the i's, and finish him. OK. So now that we got that game plan, let's go execute it. The first thing we're going to do is we need to find our delta x, the width of our intervals. It's going to be b minus a over n. That's my b. This is my a. So my delta x is going to be 2 minus 0 over n. Finish him. It's 2 over n. Now I realize that this is a super easy example. This is the first one. There is another video for Riemann sum. Go ahead, look it up. It's much harder. This is a rectangle, right? Whose what? Length is 2, whose height is 2. Half base times height, it's 2. Let's see if we can get there. Next step, find xi. That's your first value, 0 plus um, i times delta xi, 2 over n. Now we need to evaluate our function. Here are step 3. Plug it in, plug it in. Since f of x is x, if we're looking for f of xi, this guy, he gonna be, he gonna be, he gonna be, he gonna be i times 2n. Yes. So now that we found all of those pieces, we're gonna put it into our summation. This is gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum i equals 1 to n of my f of x i times my delta x. Finish him. OK. So now this is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum i equals 1 to n of, wait for it, 2n i times delta x i, which is a uh, 2n. Yes. I'll put that in a different color. 2n. 
So then I can multiply those guys and I have four over n squared and I can use my sum properties to pass that out of this summation because the summation the index is i doesn't depend anything on n. So then this is the limit as n goes to infinity of pass it out. Okay, I'm back. This is four over n squared times this sum. Whew. It's a blue sum, kind of gruesome. I equals one to n. Yes. And then this is of i, i, i. Dana, dana. Oh, new markers. Look at how wet it is. We need some, some formulas. And now we're to the part where we need some sums. We have the sum of the first n i terms. That's gonna be n times n plus one over two. And then we have the sum of i squared from one to n. That's gonna be n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six. And then this last sum, the sum of i cubed, or a number, an index cubed. It's i from one to n of n times n plus one over two all of that squared. Now that we have those sum sum formulas, we can evaluate that. We see that this summation is going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. Mm -hmm. And then I still have my 4 over n to the fourth. And then I have the limit as n goes to 0. Oh, finish him. How did that become four? It's not, it's a two. Deuces. Because I'm about to say bye-bye to this problem. After we run that limit, we see the two hits the four, kills it. Oh, and if I, uh, uh, you're a two, you're a one. And then you run that limit. I have an n square on top, n square on bottom, so that limit goes to two. Thank you.